morning. I've come to a place called Devil's Dyke, which is just on the outskirts of Brighton. Uh, I've been here loads and loads of times. And at the time of recording this, in the UK, we've got freedom to go out and obviously take photographs and things like that. But by the time I come to edit this and publish this on the tube, then we won't be allowed out of our houses. So I am quite simply taking advantage of the last bit of freedom that we've got in the UK. The temperature has dropped massively overnight. Yesterday it was quite warm. This morning it's four degrees Celsius. There was frost on my car. I was kind of hoping for some mist. It's a little bit. You can see in the distance, there's a layer of mist. But since we haven't got a huge amount of mist, I've just got to look at what compositions are possible. If I could ask for one thing for Christmas, I think it would have to be a better understanding of the weather system because I thought we were on target for some mist this morning, which I understand you get when you get warmish weather and then there's a sudden drop in temperature. That's definitely happened overnight. Uh, yet very minimal mist. So if you come to Devil's Dyke, you don't have to have mist. There's loads of opportunities here. Um, I've been here loads of times, so I'll be able to share some photographs from different perspectives and I'll show, I'll show you where I took them as well. You've obviously got the classic shot, which is next to the car park. If you want a fantastic view, as soon as you step out of the car or even from the car, then Devil's Dyke is a perfect place because just look east and you've got miles and miles worth of view and it's got rolling hills and everything is perfect. I've been here loads of time, photographed that. Also, people do a lot of paragliding and things from Devil's Dyke. So if you want people in your photographs, then you just need to come here at the right time. Just look for a good sunset and there's normally people doing that here. I've done loads of infrared photography here. Actually, I've made my tutorial here just because there's loads and loads of green space plus the odd tree scattered around. So it's good for infrared photography. I think there's a lone tree over there by those cows that I might go and eye up. Sometimes you find a tree that's just so gnarly looking you think that will make a good photograph. A bit of easy picking but there's one here which is just uh, I'd say it's got plenty of space around it and uh, yeah I've definitely photographed it before. <laughs> nice and easy shot and if you get it with the right light on it it looks fantastic. There you go look at that. One nice lone tree. That mist does not seem to be rolling in any quicker. So I think we're just gonna to have to abandon the idea of having any mist in the shot and just look for some other compositions with some direct sunlight in them. It's almost clear blue skies. So I think as soon as the sun is up, that's it. The fun's gonna start, but it's going to be very quick before the sun gets a bit harsh. It's frustrating because autumn is one of my favorite times of the year to take photographs. But this year, every weekend has just been rain, 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 rain. Now, though that's good for the leaves and the color to come out, it's not stopped raining. So I've not had a chance to actually get out. I don't know if you can make this out on camera because the sun's coming up behind. But just to the south of the car park, so the car park is literally up there and the road is here. To your right, as you drive up towards Devil Dyke, there is a valley. Uh, the sun's coming up over there, so that's not going to light this up anytime soon. Plus, I think you need really, really spectacular light for this to work. Once again, if you've got mist, this is really going to start to come alive. Uh, but there's no mist this morning. But here's another composition. I've never got a successful photograph of this because I haven't got the mist coming in here. But you can see how the mist had all just channel into that valley. If nothing becomes of my trip out today, it doesn't matter because the reason that I do landscape photography is so that I get out of the house. And the fact that I've been told to stay in my house for a month now, leading up to December, my favorite time of year to take photographs, uh, there's no better excuse than just to come out. I've got this tree here, which is catching the light through. And if I can get a nice composition through there, that could be quite nice. Yeah, I think I can make something of that. So it's always good to explore new places. Didn't get the conditions I was expecting this morning. So I just thought, right, scrap the plans. Let's just go for a walk. And I found something. Not even trying too hard to find a composition, but I think I'll get the camera out the bag. Now this is not what I came out to photograph, but it's turned out to be actually a really nice scene. Just a single tree here. And I'm getting enough separation between that tree and the surrounding area. And then when you come back here, 
Yeah, she starts to get a bit of contrast with the par, which is working out quite nicely. I'm pretty happy with that actually. I think, uh, I think I'll continue to explore a few more compositions in the area. Ah, I know where I am. There's my lone tree up there. Let's go and photograph that. You know, sometimes you come out and it's just freezing cold and windy. And then you get days like today, which is just a lovely crisp morning. This is friggin' lovely. Ah, oh, absolutely zero regrets coming out before I go to work. So I'll spin the camera around and I'll come back to the lone tree. And as you can see, it's now lit up by the sunlight, which will help it separate it from the background. Uh, the only thing I've got to avoid now is my shadow being in the photograph. I'll take my composition from here. There's actually a cheeky cow hiding behind the tree. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm gonna put the tree in front of the cow Use a long lens or longer. I'm shooting 24 to 105 and I'll get this shot. <sighs> totally getting carried away. Got, I've got to go to work today. 20 minutes to get back to the car park, no pressure. Yeah, it'll be fine, don't worry. Got some other news. This year, 2020, I have finally made it into the Brighton and Hove calendar. Now, if you're local, you'll know what that means. Uh, but essentially, there is the Brighton and Hove calendar, and it's been on my absolute wish list for years, years and years and years. So essentially it's a collection of really good landscape photographs, seascapes, and generally lifestyle and just generally quirky images that people have taken from Brighton. And the good thing is, all of the photographers that make it into the calendar are local. So I've made it into the elite group of people that are in the calendar this year. So uh, once I've got a copy of the calendar, I'll put that. Whoa! What should I sacrifice first? Should I go for dignity if I fall? Should I try and protect my camera? Should I just, just, keep, on, just keep on filming? Just go with it. So yeah, I've made it into the calendar. Once it arrives in the post, I'll make a quick video about that and share it with you guys. As you can see, the obvious cliche shot doesn't yield any results at sunrise in the winter. The sun is rising too far to the left and therefore the contours of all the hills is not really working. So this is not a sunrise winter shot. I've been here at sunset, summer, seems to work really well. Sun will set over there. You can crop the shot. You can crop the sun out of the image and that's your composition. I've come back to the valley just before the car park and the sun still isn't into the depths of the valley. So this is quite a tricky location to shoot. So you can see here, it's really contrasty scene. But if there was to be mist in the shot, I think that that could work. Right, so just before I finish this video off, I'm going to take you up to the other side of the road where there are a few more things that you might want to photograph. There you go, look at that for a view. It's probably not going to come across on this camera because everything is so far away, but you can see all the way to the Brighton seafront and you scan all the way around that shore and port. And the plaques that I showed you right at the beginning tells you that on a clear day, you can see the Isle of Wight from here. So that's, that gives you an idea of how high up we are. This tree here, I have photographed before. Now you don't want the building in the background. So I think I came round here, but this tree has seen better days. When I photographed it, it wasn't actually split into two. It was just one tree leaning. Disappointed with the amount of mist we got that day, I packed up my things and went to work but I don't like to quit. So I came back the next day with my friend Pablo to mist, lots of it. Ah, oh, look at the clouds over there. 
Thank you, sir. Oh, I've never been here when it's fog. This is the valley. You remember the valley from yesterday without the mist? Well, we definitely have mist today. But yeah, this is what we were hoping for yesterday. So don't go anywhere just yet. I'm going to get some shots. Okay, the, uh, the mist was receding from the bowl, as you could probably see from my drone footage. So we've come back round to nearer to the car park, facing west to that classic cliche shot that I was going on about yesterday. And this is where all of the mist is. Right, I'm going to stop, stop talking and take some photographs. So here's the composition at the moment. This is constantly changing. This has changed in the last minute. I need to take another shot. Some of the hills keep on revealing themselves and then disappearing. Pablo, get another shot, it's changing. Yesterday, you might remember, <clears throat> well, earlier on in this video, which was yesterday for me, you might remember that the sun was in the wrong place. It's just going to light up the top of these hills. I think that that will balance the composition out well because you've got white mist on this side, and this is quite dark because it's all hills right now. But once that's lit up, I think that the exposure and the composition will be a bit more balanced. I've got half an hour left before I've got to go to work, so I love the pressure of this. This is good. Ah, oh, this. This is what I get up early for. This is frigging incredible. This is everything. You've got clear skies. You've got moving fog. Good company with Pablo. What is not to like? And the fog is between all of the hills, so it's creating separation and depth and everything. This is good, I'm happy. I'm not happy with the fact that I've only got about 20 minutes before I've got to leave. Just waiting for the sun to come up a bit high over the top of this hill and start to light up our scene, which at the moment is deep in mist, but the sun will burn that off and we'll start to get a bit more texture. So here we are, day two, and I wanted mist and now I've got too much mist. Pablo and I were just standing right in the thick of it with absolutely no view. So I thought, just for a laugh, I'll send up the drone and I'll see what the view is like from up in the sky. And it turns out all of my best photographs from this morning were taken from my drone. And what a view it was. Right. Reality calls, I've got to go to work. Otherwise I'm gonna be late, I'm gonna get into trouble. So thank you for joining me, Pablo. That was an emotional experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're gonna stay here and get some more award-winning shots. I've got to uh, go to work. Hopefully I will get shots. <laughs> I'm gonna go and design some houses. Okay, All right, okay. take, care. take care, see you later. Oh, I'm not sure how long this video is gonna go on for, but I will now say, Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll leave you with some of my favorite photographs from Devil's Dyke from today, from yesterday, from over the years. See you in the next video.